Let's take a look at how to start building our game in 3D. This car will be our main character. Here it is on your TV screen. How does PlayStation generate it? Let's start from the ground up. Space in 3D is defined by X, Y, and Z coordinates. They describe a point called a vertex. Link three vertices or more, and you get a polygon. The most basic polygon goes by the highly technical name, triangle. Almost any object in a game is made up of hundreds or even thousands of polygons. They're the building blocks of 3D. We can fill the polygons with solid colors. That's one of several ways to draw them. Another way is to add rich detail by taking a picture of a texture and stretching it over the polygon. This is called texture mapping. Each vertex of the polygon has information about what part of the picture or texture is connected. Modify these values and the texture map can be made to fit just right. Here's the car with all textures applied, ready to rip. Ladies and gentlemen, we are pleased to present the new Evolution of Man exhibit in our technology wing. We found out there's something different at nightclubs in London. It was so cool, we're taking you for a look. London's top clubs have more than great music. They have PlayStation. Together, they make for a great night out. This is the Killers Club, where you can come, you can play PlayStation and have a good time, listen to some good music as well. Everybody knows that it's just a bit of fun at the end of the day. You know, the girls love the PlayStation, man, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I think once you actually get the, the females on them, you know, it's harder to get them to go on there, but once they're on there, then, yeah, you can't get them off. When the conversation gets dry, <laughs> you can retire to play a PlayStation. We went across town to check out another club called the Ministry of Sound. It's new, it's hot, and it has a whole room devoted to PlayStation. Video games fit right in with the club's smoke and light show. Club owners told us that PlayStation helps bring in new people. And then we have better facilities to offer um, than other clubs. Um, you know, it just gives them more value for money, being able to play on the PlayStations and see new games that aren't out in the shops or and stuff like that, really. Playing your favorite games in a nightclub is a perfect fit, unless someone's trying to ask you a lot of questions. <laughs> I've just lost my game! Oh, sorry. Cool Borders 3 features a pretty killer tree run where you have to shoot through these gaps to kind of find daylight. You don't find daylight, you splat. We really wanted to capture that authentic snowboarding experience. We motion captured riders for all the jumping animations, we've added a powder trail, and really tweaked the carving to give you that sensation of just cutting through the snow. There's an all new avalanche mode in Cool Borders 3. Basically survival of the fittest. See who can make it down the mountain in one piece. There's an all-new border cross mode. Features eight players. 
beat each other up, punch each other, slap each other, push each other down, kick snow in each other's face. Anything to get to the finish line. We're the only snowboard game out there. Do you want this to be a duck shot, or do you want to be a regular straight up and down kind of thing? I guess you want to do these two. Project Wormhole is something that came about because we wanted to give somebody a clue. <laughs> no idea. <laughs> I'm raging. I'm raging. I got nothing. Uh, if I catch it. Okay. Uh, let's, we're, this is a take. This is. I'm not screwing it up. This time. Really. Okay. some time. <laughs> hey, loud mouth. Hey, loud mouth. Disco. You keep it down, I'm trying to do a commercial here for PlayStation. Hi, my name is Robert Hernandez from Third Party Test. The game I'm going to show you is Croc the Legend of Gobos on level 1B2. If you turn Croc, 180 degrees around at the very beginning of the level. If you walk to the rock and stomp on it, a secret area will appear below. In the secret area there are five hearts that you can continue to accumulate if you've already beat the level. Each heart will give you one life and you can keep returning to this area until you accumulate a total of 98 lives. You love to play games, now help us make one from scratch. Welcome to the first of a four-part series on the making of a game called Wormhole. We're really excited about Project Wormhole. It's something that we came up with to give the subscribers of the PlayStation Underground uh, sort of an idea of what goes into developing a game step by step. Another cool thing about Project Wormhole is that we want these subscribers to become involved. You can send in your suggestions, and if we like them, then you just might end up seeing your name in the credits. In the next few minutes, you'll be introduced to some game and 3D design fundamentals. Over the next three issues, we'll build a working game together, inviting your suggestions by email. Let's talk about design. If we were building a full game, we'd need to start with a detailed design document spelling out every character, level, and enemy. That's because regular development typically takes dozens of specialists over a year and costs a million dollars or more. We'll make a mini game instead, so you can quickly see important fundamentals. Here's our concept. Wormhole will put you behind the wheel of a futuristic vehicle, plunging down a tunnel filled with deadly enemies and obstacles. Dodge them while driving on the floor, walls, and ceiling. Blast your way with high-powered guns or die trying. Check out the Glove. The revolutionary new video game controller from Reality Quest. Yeah, but where can I get one? Now available wherever video games are sold and under 50 bucks. Feel the control and speed, especially on racing and fighting games. Just a flick of the wrist with all the buttons at your fingertips. Take the time to learn it. If you're a serious gamer, it's worth it.
get in the game. The Glove, 1-888-96-GLOVE, www.theglove.com. I love The Glove. My name is Chad Watson. I work for the TIP team here at Sony Computer Entertainment. We're going to be playing Jet Moto 2. I'm going to show you a shortcut that is in roller side. After the big, the turn around in the big tent, if you hit that just right, which is that is not just right, <laughs> it's a very narrow shortcut. If you, oh, I missed it. If you hit it just right between, oh, hit between the Chef Boyardee sign and the Kawasaki sign just right. If you're racing against a bunch of riders, you can pass them all up in that area because you miss the whole circle loop thing that, that goes on. And this is also kind of cool. Ta-da. <laughs> I'm Chris Sorrell, I'm producer of Medieval. Um, I've also been involved in the design from the start and quite a bit of the programming as well. The game is an action adventure. It was inspired by the classic arcade game Ghouls and Ghosts. My name's Jason Wilson and I'm the lead artist and co-designer along with Chris Sorrell on Medieval. Throughout the game you're playing a skeletal knight called Sedan Fortescue. He is been risen from the dead by the sorcerer named Zarok and throughout the game you're pursuing the sorcerer to try and uh, stop him from completely taking over this weird medieval landscape called Galomir. The look of the game is, is quite unique. You know, a lot of games are based around map editor constructed landscapes, kind of fairly rigid block-like look to it. This is something that we don't have in medieval, we have curves and skewed uh, geometry all over the place, and buildings at funny angles. The game also has quite a strong sort of RPG theme, the requirement for you to use particular weapons to learn particular strategies, achieving 20 different levels and tackling probably about 50 different characters along the way. And when he was alive, he was the champion of the, the king of the land and died valiantly in battle. He's quite a goofy looking character, I suppose. The aim with him was to give him a, a kind of goofy, quirky sort of a look but at the same time for him to also appear to be the valiant and brave character that he actually is. A lot of people said to us, why do we want to have a skeleton as the main hero instead of some sort of huge muscle guy with a big gun or Lara Croft or whatever. So, but we thought it was kind of like silly and different and we both liked the film Nightmare for Christmas and other sort of silly sort of horror type stuff. So we set out to do um, a skeleton and lots of silly things the skeleton would fight. He's got quite a lot of attack moves and in these I think he looks quite powerful in that but at the same time he's got huge floppy feet which make him look a bit sort of clumsy as he runs around. That we're not trying to do a character that's Conan the Barbarian or something. He's he is a bit alternative. He's a sort of an accidental hero really. But I think it's more for people who are grown up and still think they're kids. <laughs>
Next issue, we'll tweak the car. What colors and textures should it have? What kind of weapons? Send us suggestions on any aspect of Wormhole. You can be a part of a discussion of Wormhole at www.playstation.com. And if you send us comments we like, your name just might end up in the game's credits. Next issue, we'll build a special animated world for your driving pleasure. It will be waiting behind these doors. NFL Extreme is a high-impact, arcade-style, five-on-five football game. Wide open, there's no out-of-bounds, it's trash talk your opponent, no penalties, brutally physical, tons of exaggerated hits, sack the quarterback, flex to the fans, blitz your linebacker, taunt your opponent, I own you, don't get up, chump, is that all you got? Welcome to the NFL, baby. NFL Extreme, rocks in July. A new project is emerging at Core, currently called Ninja. It'll have a new name by the time it's released. Uh, my name's JB. I'm working on the game Ninja. It involves a ninja running around the landscapes, fighting various sort of mythological beasts. There's about 50 different baddies, ranging from like goblins to humanoid type characters. And there's six different sorts of weapons: a sword, sai. Originally, when we started, it was all meant to be based on Japanese sort of myth myths and legends. There's lots of magic. So if you can power up your weapons, and it's about four levels of power. And we've taken sort of basic elements and from my favourite games and stuck them all together. Shinobi, uh, Ghosts and Goblins, sort of classic arcade games. The main objective is to get through the level and then get to the boss and then defeat the boss. Along the way there'll be sort of various different traps and pitfalls uh, that block your path. So there'll be a lot of baddies in the levels. So by the time you got to the end of the level, I imagine you'd have sort of maybe got through about 100 or 150 baddies. 10 different bosses, one on each level. I'm Martin Iveson, a musician at Core Design. I've been doing the music for Ninja and the cutscenes and in-game sound effects. Basically, this is where you meet the dragon. Once that's finished, you'll switch straight to the game graphics, you'll defeat the boss, and then this is what happens. Ninja, by another name, should be dropping into stores this fall. Watch your back. Hi, my name is John Diamond and I'm a third party tester. The cool code I want to show today is from the game Pitfall 3D. At the password screen, if you type in Crane's Baby, you get an extra special surprise. It's original Pitfall Harry from the early 80s.
If you had fun playing Tomb Raider, you're not alone. Six million copies of Tomb Raider 1 and 2 have been sold worldwide. We've come to the place that brought Laura Croft to life, Core Design in Derby, England. We're taking you inside to find out how it happened and what's next. It was conceptualized five years ago now. And one of the guys said we want to do a game based on raiding some tombs and kind of going underground and into the world of the pharaohs. And that was something I was always really keen to do. He said, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's draw some things up, do a style guide. Let's see what the character's going to look like. And of course, he came back and it was a male character. For two months, Laura was, was male. And then we went down and saw it on screen and, and Laura transformed into a female. Tomb Raider 1 and 2 became worldwide hits, and the console version of Tomb Raider 2 was exclusive to the PlayStation. So what's next? There will be a movie. The movie's live action. It's with a big uh, movie studio. The great thing is that we get uh, total say and veto over the script and the content and the storyline, which is fantastic. Uh, Lara herself will have another game out for Christmas 98. There has been some muted discussion about maybe a, a sidekick for Lara. Maybe a girl, maybe a boy. With, maybe with the, there is some discussion, but I'd hate to blow it before uh, it's finalised. It'd be good though, wouldn't it? I think it'd be pretty neat. What will be in Tomb Raider 3? Core is giving PlayStation Underground subscribers a first look at some footage. One of the main differences is we're going to give Lara a lot more moves new vehicles. We've uh, overhauled the 3D engine to make everything faster and in high res. This level is going to be based around London where you'll start off on the rooftops and then you have to venture down into the sewers and the disused uh, tube train lines that have been closed off. Your ultimate aim of this adventure is to break into a corporate building and steal back an artifact that has been taken from uh, a museum. Laura's been hired to go and find it. We're drawing quite a lot more than what um, Tomb Raider 2 could, so we can get big expanses of open area, build quite detailed backgrounds. This is uh, Darren. He's going to be doing uh, the main animations for Lara on Tomb Raider 3. At the moment, he's working on various new moves for Lara, like crawls. We're trying to give her a, a knife so she can actually stab things. <laughs> She's going to use the knife to try and prise certain secret items out from the rock. And as you can see, she, she grabs the dagger out. It'll be concealed in her leg. Tomb Raider 3 is being built with some interesting custom tools. Here are two of them. This is the animation editor. It allows us to do all the characters in the game. And here you can see a, a wireframe form. In the first game, she was made up of around about 350 polygons. And then in the second game, we upped her to about 540, just to add more detail, more curves. Actually select and draw small tiles, small textures. And we pick them up and place them on all the polygons to build up Lara's look. A second tool creates game levels. Here we're watching level designer Heather Gibson build a room with a series of mouse clicks. And then if you look along this side of the editor, I've got a selection of textures that I can use on this map. Um, we can then go on to apply the textures to these areas. So it's just a matter of popping textures onto the faces that are displayed within the room editor. We can apply a light to the room, change the ambience of that room, change the range and the strength of the light to get that nice moody atmosphere that we've, we've got on most of the levels. And I can actually have a look at this room now if I go into preview and fly around and see how it looks. And also we can trigger all the baddies within this system. So that means that when we place our dogs or cult members within this particular map, I can say that I wanted that dog to attack Lara at a specific point, so I can select the dog and trigger it so that when Lara crosses this trigger point here, the dog becomes activated. It allows the player to run across the trigger and run back into a different area of the map and have the sense that something different's happening because the baddies are still coming through, but they might come through it from a different area. So it always gives you the feeling that they're actually quite clever, that they're working out how to get to you. 
As we left, team member Peter Barnard revealed one last thing. Did you ever wonder what Laura looked like without her clothes on? I bet you wish you hadn't bothered. This is a good make-believe world that's a little nutty. I think that the kids can differentiate between the violence that they see in the video games as opposed to the violence that people experience on the street. There is violence, but it's like any other video game, you know, you gotta kick, punch, and I mean, you, got, you gotta understand it's, it's, not, it's not real life, it's something that you're playing. I think people look for violence and if you can play with it and sort of get it out of your system that it, maybe it's better, you know, than, than trying to go find it and use it, use it in a real life type of situation. If you don't understand that you're playing a the game, then you got a problem. Ah, a couple of goodies here for you folks. You might want to try WCW Nitro on PlayStation Underground. Is that true? You get these underground? Are you getting these out of some guy's trunk? If you were going to design a video game from the ground up, what would it be like? With PlayStation's NetUrose development system, you could find out. NetUrose lets you create games on a PC, then play them on a PlayStation. It's helping development talent emerge worldwide. In Japan, a NetUrose competition brought out 50 entries, and a panel of five judges were blown away by their quality and originality. The grand prize, a Sony Vio Notebook computer, went to an entry called Little Wing. In the game, you get a paper airplane from a professor who teaches you how to adjust it and master throwing techniques. Then you square off against a series of opponents. Judges commented on the strong gameplay. The gold prize went to a game called Asobu Rakugaki. Rakugaki means doodled or scribbled and refers to the main character, a boy. You help the boy get free and take him in search of fun or asobu. Judges like the fact that the boy discovers that too much freedom can be boring. They call it a very untraditional game. The silver prize went to Hover Racing, which impressed the judges with its speed and user-friendly help system. Give all three games a try in this issue. And if you want to take a shot at developing your own game with NetUrose, get more information at www.neturose.com.